Hello everyone, welcome along to Chargers TV. Yes, we're back for another week as round three of the Coles Express NBL1 South season concluded over the weekend. But first and foremost, we are here at Swisher Hoops Academy. Uh, alongside me is none other than JB. JB, welcome. G'day Ronnie, how are you going? It's been a... Uh a whirlwind, so to speak. I think the best way to describe uh, Friday and Saturday night would be somewhat relief. Um, yes. A massive build-up to a massive home opener, and thankfully the crowds turned out as well. Around 1,500 people across two nights of basketball yes. there at the Hobart Netball and Sports Centre and saw some pretty entertaining uh, games as well. But we are here. We're ready to review round three and, of course, looking forward to round four as well. Absolutely. Of course, round four we'll, we'll get into very shortly, but let's recap round three. And women's were up first, and they get the win against the Ballarat Miners, 55-42. to 42. Carla Steiner was on fire in that game. She had 25 points. Mate. She had like 12 in the first quarter, though, JB. She, <laughs> yeah, finished with 25 and 15, I there think. You're Anzac medalist for that game. Absolutely. And Angeliki uh, Binsleu with 13 points as well, too. And the passion and the charisma... We see Thoughts. from her is, un is uh, unbelievable, isn't it? Absolutely. It's the best way to describe it. Yes, no, a great game there for the girls, the home opener for the season. Of course, this one, Ronnie, was a game we kind of looked at as certainly one that Hobart could get, but it was a game that was, you know, that was going to have to be hard fought. Of course, we've seen the girls' progression. They'd gone from, you know, losing by 39 to losing by 14 to losing by nine. So we knew they were on the precipice. That We knew they were building. And Kayla Steindl really set the tone for that. The back to the basket, the fade away, the 15-foot jumper, the high-low, the dump-down passing, that traditional big that I know you yes. and I love watching, Ronnie, really dominated the game, really controlled the pace. And I think the girls got out to around that 15, 16-point margin there at one point. But, of course, the miners were always going to come back at the team and of course the likes of your Abby Weirungs and your uh, Christy Rinaldi's were always yes. going to put the pressure on there of course you know uh, Weirung fouling out of that game and I know she had 16 points really tried to put the team on her back to try and get them over the line wasn't able to do it uh, and our girls luckily enough were able to settle of course Angeliki having a massive fourth quarter really contributing there of course we saw the likes of Claire Murray in that game get yep. her first NBL one minutes which was great to see as well but the girls really powered on really powered hard um, managed to get the win um, in front of a really packed crowd yes. and for the women's team Ronnie it's probably something they're not used to over the last couple of years of course being down at the Kingborough Sports Centre we know what peak hour on Friday nights yeah, like my word. cold nights down at Kingborough not necessarily a, a modicum of success either so to see the team really building towards that win would have finished that game in front of 500, 600 people by the end of it. A really solid reception, a great result for the girls and something for them to really look at and build upon for the rest of the season. Absolutely. Post-game, we caught up with Kayla Steiner. You can see that video on our Chargers U uh, YouTube page as well too. So make sure you have a bit of a look at that. We won't do a throwaway just yet. We'll... We'll go into Saturday night's game and Knox came into town and Knox just proved too strong. But after a very back and forth first half, Jobe, it was only three points at half time. And really competitive through that third quarter as well. Absolutely. It was only in that last quarter where it started to open open up. But maybe, no, more more towards mid-third mid -third quarter, sorry, when I spoke with Kira, Kira Rowe from the Knox Raiders post-game. Uh, Knox went at 74-59 and the scorer, we don't have any scorers there? No, no. The, uh, Angel, I know Angelique. I'm pretty sure Angelique we'll was... The, we'll get the graphic up anyway, yeah, we'll get Jobe. the graphic up there now. I'm pretty sure Angelique was key contributor on that one there. She was really putting points on the board. Kayla Steindl had a really nice fast start in that game as well. Unfortunately, wasn't able to continue on with it. And of course, Sarah O'Neill had a really big fourth yes. quarter um, effort as well. And ultimately for the Raiders there, Ronnie, Alicia Froling coming into yes. town. Plenty of help as well, as we mentioned there. Kira Rowe actually winning the Anzac medal. Of course, you can check that uh, cross out on the YouTube channel as well. But a really one of those games, Ronnie, that I, I think the back-to-back, -back, the energy... It was one of those games where, you know, we were hoping Hobart at home were going to try and split it. We're mm. going to try and get one on the board. and looked like they were going to get two at one point there. But just the experience of Knox. I mean, they've moved now to four and one through five games in the season there. They're a genuine contender again in the South, let alone for the entire competition. Alicia Froling finished with, I think, 21 and yep. 10 as well. Kira Rowe, as we mentioned, winning the medal. But there were lots of key contributors throughout the night there for Knox, of course. Uh, it was Chloe Broomhall getting yes. her first minutes yes. with the in that game so a big congratulations to her 
Um, and it was just one of those games, Johnny, as we mentioned, you know, it looked like the Chargers were going to have a really solid start. The battle between Froling and Steinder was, you know, really that headline matchup throughout that game. It ended up being a, a Froling win, but certainly Kayla Steindl really throwing some solid jabs oh, and a yeah. solid right hook there in the first half to, to really gain control of that matchup there. Um, Sarah O'Neill, as we mentioned, really trying to chip in down the fourth quarter just when things weren't quite going well down low. But, you know, a full credit to the uh, to the Chargers women's team, I think there, Ronnie. Of course, going up against the Knox Raiders was always going to be a tough task. Getting a double at home when you're taking on the likes of a Froling, of a Wee Rung, of a Rinaldi over your weekend, that, that's a really big yeah. uh, weekend. There's no doubt about that. So for the girls going one and one, they're probably going to be disappointed. They faded out a little bit there. Um, pretty much the best way to describe it, similarly as we did last week when they were on the road, Ronnie, they were in it for 10 rounds. It was just those last two rounds. And as we mentioned there, Knox getting the upper hand in the third quarter. Chargers tried to make a bit of a rally in the fourth, weren't able to do it. But a sensational weekend for uh, for the girls there. And I think they've got a lot to build on there and a lot more promise. I mean, we're talking about a team that's won... Uh, it's two games. It's two seasons previous had won three games. Correct. So you know they finished really strong last year, and I think this is a, a good uh, sign for the women as well that they're not going to be a side that's going to take a lot to grow into. Um, you know, Paige Bradley also not available on the weekend. Mm. One does have to assume that her impact on the game may have even changed yes. the result on Saturday night as well, and, and may have even made the game on Friday night a bit more of a blowout as well. You never know. So you know. Pages to come back into that squad. The girls have played really, really well. They've got a lot to build on, and they're going to be looking forward to this week. Absolutely. They take on the Melbourne Tigers this week, who are uh, in a similar position at the moment. Just bear with me for that's a moment. That's all right. Graphic will be on screen. Oh, good. That's, a, that's we can we can run with that. That's all right. I got the women. I got the women's form. The powers of post-game editing. <laughs> yes, absolutely, JB. Melbourne sitting on twelve with a two and three record. Hobart down down seventeenth, one and four at the moment. And um, there's a bit of a percentage. I must admit, yeah. we're just where Melbourne and Hobart are. There's a lot of percentages separating the latter at the moment. A real um, real cluster. Uh, some key players to watch here now. I believe Jade Melbourne is now departed the Tigers and on her way over to uh, the WNBA. I think yeah, massive, is. massive. So, so uh, all best wishes to her. But for Melbourne, I, I see Sammy Simons, uh, Nikki, Mc, uh, Nikki Metcalf, Metcalf, and uh, Lily uh, Kamodi as well too as their main three players. Of course, the head coach of the Melbourne Tigers women's side is another than Rory Giddy. Of course, his son Josh Giddy playing with the Oklahoma City Funday. <laughs> Who he goes okay. He does pretty well as far not too as bad. I'm... Not too bad from what I've seen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But of course, JB, uh, Melbourne, are, of course, are renowned for for their shuffle offense and 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 vice versa. They've oh, changed I... a few things up. Uh, they've been competitive in in their games. Their last game, they they lost to Danong by twelve. Uh, sorry, lost by Danong to by eight. Sorry, eighty to seventy two. There. So they're right. They're right. Win striking distance, and this should set up a great game on Friday night. Absolutely. I think the big uh, question. Mark coming into this one will be how do Hobart match up on that shuffle offense? Mm. I mean, we've heard Kayla Steindl talk about it Friday night and the way their games, um, her, how their game played out against Ballarat, and that it was a very similar offense. As we know, the shuffle offense is a pretty unique sort of setup. You know, yes. with, you talk about the triangle, you talk about the Princeton. Well, in Australia, we've got the shuffle, shuffle. Uh, and Melbourne have run with the shuffle and altered and moved it around something chronic for the better part of 40 years. And it's seen lots and lots of success. And I think we're going to see it again. Of course, we saw the Chargers women over the last couple of seasons. It's certainly been a bit of a scout to try and handle the shuffle offense. Of course, you just see basically a bunch of diagonal cuts. You see a couple of pick and rolls, all that sort of stuff. Mm. A lot comes out of the shuffle. So, you know, it has taken a little bit of time for the Hobart women to really try and manage that and see how they compete against it. But again, you've got someone like a Kayla Steindl. You've got Angelique Vincelau. And of course, Paige Bradley been the key ones for Hobart as well. So, you know, they've seen plenty of that over their time. You would think that's going to help, of course, with our younger core group as well, having seen that last year. Again, you would know that Dwayne Davey has been coaching against this, has been really trying to push for this. I know they've had a really defensive focus over practice over the last couple of weeks. They feel that's where they really want to tighten up. So this is going to be a really good test. It's going to be another real good challenge, of course. Melbourne, two and four, was it there, Ronnie, that we saw? Two and three. Uh, two, two, that's the men. Uh, two, yeah, two and three. Two and three, one and four. So yeah. again, we're at a bit of a balance there, pretty much, you know, one extra win to Melbourne. Hobart really looking to build. And I think they've shown they're going to be a competitive side at home. So it's going to be a really tough game. But I think this is one that the Chargers women, now that they've started to really build and they've shown their capabilities, you're going to have Paige back in the squad, you would assume. I know she'd been back briefly in the USA. Uh, if she's back in the squad and they're up firing and they're fit and healthy, this is a game that Hobart are going to see. They're going to have circled on the calendar all week. And I think they can get the W. 
Yes, it'll be interesting to see and find out. It all happens Friday night at the Hobart Netball and Sports Centre. Tip off at 6 o'clock, the traditional time, of course, here in Hobart. And we're on air from 5.55pm by the NBL1 website or the NBL1 app. You can download that by your uh, Google or uh, sorry, Android, Android. Or, or Apple. There we go. Device. There we go. We got that right. Yeah, well, Melbourne's definitely a, a, it's a must win. I mean, every game's a must win. But, um, you know, they're sitting a couple of spots above us on the ladder. Um, had an up and down start and, and had a really good win on the weekend against one of the one of the better teams in Nutter Wadding. So it's really important for us to come out and again, as I keep saying, taking steps forward and turning that one into a an almost good effort into a into a win. Um, and it's yeah, definitely one that we sort of have to take care of this week if we're if we're serious about um, you know, having a crack for the finals. Uh, let's jump in. <laughs> Very good. Let's jump into the men's results now because uh, Friday night saw uh, Ballarat in town, JB, and uh, it was a, geez, it was she was a tough contest and had it had it all really. Had absolutely everything. <laughs> Final scores: the Miners ninety four eighty three, uh, and you know a really tough battle there for Hobart. Devin Watson, another 29 points, had a really solid outing there. Yep. Had some key contributors there, of course, with Sam McDaniel. We saw Jared Bairstow for the first time in the season. We also saw Zach White for the first time this season. But it was just one of those games for Hobart, Ronnie, where you could see early on their jump shots weren't falling. Mm. And it really felt like it was going to be one of those games where, OK, if they can recognise the jump shots early, let's get inside, let's work it. Took them a little bit of time to do it, but once they started working inside, they started using Sam McDaniel a little bit more, they started yep. using Bearstow a bit more. Zach White really contributed nicely as well. You know, you start to see, you know, things rolling. And I think ultimately the thing that hurt Hobart here was, number one, Ollie Angerstein being out. Yes. Not necessarily ideal. But again, we've heard Ollie's recovery may be quicker than first thought. So a big shout out to yeah. Mr. Wham Bam Jam. Thank you, ma'am, himself. Uh, and on top of that, Ronnie, <laughs> Ballarat is huge. Yeah, they were. They, you know, when you're going up against guys that are routinely 6'7", six, 6'8", six, 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 uh, I know Rudolph didn't win the medal for them, yep. but he had 36 and 13. Oh, yes. He was extremely tough to beat on the boards. Nick Poziglu, we got a shout-out with him yes. uh, and a chat with him post-game. 20 points, big you know, big game for him as well. A lot of players doing a lot of things, and it was just genuine size. And at times, you know, with the, with the lineups, you had a look out there, and Hobart matched it height for height. But, you know, these are a, a lot older and mature bodies as well. We're talking five, six years age difference, seven years age difference beyond, a lot more bulk, a lot more muscle. And that really comes into play when the physical side of the game uh, is where the game is going to be won, of course. Three-quarter time came along, and unfortunately, yes. um, we do have to mention it, uh, Anthony Stewart heading back to the locker room to watch the game. Of course, yes. uh, you know, that happens in a game. Yeah, there was just an argument over a rebound Correct. call, technical to the player, Anthony giving the technical, not realising, of course, that siren had gone, so everyone's on the benches. Yeah. So unfortunately, Stewie didn't see the end of that game. Yes. But full credit to the players, though, in the fourth quarter, really rallied hard, really tried to press up, and, you know, I think, you know, it was, it was a good gamble there by Coach Bennell in the end. Of course, yes. we spoke about it on broadcast. You could see he didn't know whether to pull the subs. He didn't know whether to keep the players in. Eventually kept the players in, really pushed as hard as they could. And probably the game was probably right up until the last 45 seconds, I'd say, right to the point there. And then, of course, uh, Ballarat getting the win on that one, Ronnie. Yes, yes. They were just too strong on the night, JB. And um, talking with Stewie today, bumped into Stewie when he was in here just working his one his youngest son out and um, we had a good we had a good chuckle over the uh, situation Joe. Ah uh, very good of course <laughs> Anthony was um I do know post game as well Anthony was uh, having some pretty long and lengthy conversations with some some different players and stuff of course we talk about the discourse that goes on yes. on the bench mm. with player coaches throughout the game and I know for a few of those players that we'd highlighted in the broadcast he was having some pretty good um, productive chats with them of yes. course we know maybe in a different time Stewie's you know blowing up maybe he's not worrying about it he's about it Monday. No, he, he addressed any issues that may have been there on the night, spoke with those players, and those players come out the next night and they performed as well, Ronnie, and Absolutely. what a performance they put on. Yes, it was one of the games of the season, as I described it towards the end, JB. It was, uh, geez, it was a great battle and a great game to call as well, and we won it 76-73. Yes, we did. A big win there to your McKay Timber Hobart Chargers. Top scorer there and the Anzac medalist, Devin Watson, with 20 points. And I thought Sam McDaniel went really close to the middle mm. as well. He had another productive all-around game. Again, Zach White chipping in, doing where what he needs to do. Jared Bairstow battling really hard with Denga Kuth. When the tallest player on your squad, six foot seven, and you're battling yeah. 
Denga Kuth at a listed seven foot, seven foot one. It's a it's a pretty big battle to be going on down there. But JB really up for the you know for the battle there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, massive massive effort there. Might I add to to the Raiders who did not lie down. No, I know they at didn't. one I know at one point there the Chargers had got it out. You know, around 15, 20 points, and it, it looked like they were ready to put that one away. But they fought hard. You know, right to the end, managed to get back into the game and. For lack of a better term, Ronnie, there were more live ball situations to win and lose a game yes. at the end of a game that I've seen potentially in my time calling NBL 1 uh, Seaball Basketball. The last 14 seconds there, missed shot, um, of defensive rebound, Raiders down the other end of the floor, shot, missed, shot, missed, shot, missed, batted around, siren goes. Massive, massive effort there from the Chargers. Of course, they probably felt they let one slip go the night, uh, let one slip the night before. Mm. They come back in, really established themselves early, really got the crowd involved, and were able to go from there. Uh, full credit again to the Raiders, though, and again another apology to the Knox yeah. Raiders on behalf <laughs> yeah. of myself. I don't know how many times I called you the Ballarat Miners, but again, <laughs> sincere and unreserved apologies about that. You are the Raiders, and you had nearly found the lost ark once again. <laughs> Tried to get that double, of course. We spoke about it as well on broadcast, Ronnie. You look yes. at the Raiders' road trip there. Yeah. They go up and smack the Thunder by 38. Yep. They lose by three to us. They're a plus 35 on the scoreboard for a road trip, and they're one and one. Charges over the weekend were a minus six yes. across the weekend, and they got a victory out of it as well. It's a funny way the sport works. But, it is. You know, really good to see the team clicking. A lot of cohesion. We saw a lot of rotation throughout the lineups throughout the weekend. Uh, Jordy Stratzma, both the Clark twins, yep. Noah Xavier, Geordie Peel, yes. all of those kind of guys getting in with your Phoenix Robies. Will Ferguson really establishing mm. himself as well. Uh, you know, getting in with your Callum Bouchers, your Phoenix Robies, your Harry Griffiths. Uh, all of those guys there, you know, they're the real core of the team. Yeah. And a full credit to that young core on Saturday night that we mentioned, Ronnie. There was a period there of about 90 seconds where the entire Chargers team was essentially 17 and 18 year old kids. Yes. And mm. they set the tone defensively. They tried, they busted, they worked hard. And, you know, in situations there, we've seen times where Coach Stewart does get a little fired up, gets yep. a bit antsy. He didn't do that. He was really calm and, and, you know, placid with the guys. Let them play through for it. And the senior members of that squad really responded to that second unit. So I think a lot of credit does have to go to the tone setting that was by the young up-and-coming stars of this team as well. So massive game again towards the end. The Raiders really making a run of it. We, I thought there at one point, as the third quarter ticked on, we were 62 apiece at three-quarter time. It just had this sense of, geez, are they going to run over the top? Yeah. And they didn't, thankfully, um, from a Chargers standpoint. But a sensational game, a really competitive game. And, yeah, a full credit to the Raiders. They were an unbelievable opposition, as you mentioned, Ronnie. One of the games of the year. Absolutely. It, it's certainly right up there. And uh, a great finish. Crowd got involved towards the end. Rex Rhino came out and pumped up the crowd as well too. It was all happening down at the Hobart Netboard Sports Centre. So a great Saturday night out. Melbourne this week, you know, they're going to be pretty solid. The old Jack Purchase used to play for us. And Mason Gaze, Andrew Gaze's son, has just got the green light. So we'll have to be locked in on them. And we need to get that at home. Three and three, probably head on the road. Barmstormer of a game on Friday night. They do take on the Melbourne Tigers men's side who are in some good form in the moment. It's going to be 13th v 14th, JB. Uh, at the recording of this um, ladder, of course, there's one game happening tonight with Frankston and Diamond Valley, which is the Anzac Day game in the Anzac round. And, um, you know, Melbourne 2-3, and three, Hobart 2-3, and three, same... A percentage yeah, basic separation basic there. Percentage. So for Melbourne, Jack Purchase, of course, Ooh. who played with us a couple of years ago, he's, that's a matchup. He's uh, he he's firing on all cylinders. Watch some of the highlights oh from the boy. Dan on game today, and he's knocking down that three ball like no tomorrow. Um, Taj, uh, che, uh, che, uh, I got it right. Chahal, uh, Chahal. Yeah, there we go. I should I should get that right. Chahal. Um, He's been in good form at the moment. One of the one of the guards there at the, at the Tigers and can sh and can shoot the lights out. It was defensively pretty good as well too. Um, and then we got Michael uh, Wern. He, he played he played a good game as well too. And then I've thrown in Mason Gaze as well too. Not just because he's the son of Andrew, because Mason's been in pretty good form and has had some good minutes uh, here and there and has shown why he's probably on the verge of, of getting into the NBL. Of course, he had a had a trial with the with the check jumpers last. Last year in the in the DP tryouts, and of course, um, you know, came down here and tried his luck down. Unfortunately, missed out, um, but but still in in, in good form. So, um, 
Melbourne are going to look uh, look like a tough competitor. And again, yeah. coached by the great one, Andrew Gaze, as, as we mentioned. And of course, we've got, we got a throwback Thursday coming for you on that one. This oh, week. absolutely, absolutely, we do. And uh, and of course, Melbourne, of course, uh, they're renowned for yeah, Drew is very renowned for his shuffle offense. And uh, I, from what I saw in the highlights, JB, they they. They, they do a little bit of that action still, and they, but there's a little bit more. It looks not not big freedom, but there's a more ball movement. Read and react, than, yeah, read and react situations from from Melbourne. So it's going to be interesting to see how Anthony Stewart coaches this one against his uh, counterpart from years gone by. Absolutely, and I mean the big match up there for Stewie would be looking at, of course, is Jack Purchase. Yes, Jack was an absolute star down here oh, my word, in 2021. Was. I mean, you know, playing alongside Cohen Sapwell, John O'Mines, yes. Tad Dufelmeyer, everyone um, that was on that squad there, a massive, massive lineup mm -hmm. that it was. Jack's going to be really key for the fact that Jack is six foot nine. Jack can play with his back to the basket, but Jack is just as handy with the ball in his hand standing in the corner or standing on the wing. He presents a lot of threat. So for Stewie, it will be a defensively focused game. We've yes. talked about the shuffle. We've talked about the read and react yeah. there. But for Stewie, it's just going to be really key. Oh, for the Chargers and Stewie, of course, it's going to be really key to lock in defensively in this game. And, I mean, we all talk about Stewie loving, you know, getting teams out that love to shoot the three ball. But there's no doubt about it. Stewie is a very defensive-focused coach, and that is going to be something they're going to look at. They're going to look at the different sets of those players there, um, you know, playing into a bit of the psyche of having Jack yep. played for the team before. Mm -hmm. um, but on top of that, it's also going to be an advantage for Melbourne, knowing that Jack's played here, Jack's starred here. Yes. There's a little bit of inside knowledge there, and I, I think Gazy would be vermiss, not that he doesn't know. <laughs> like, I think Gazy knows what he's doing. Oh, absolutely. But I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> he will tap in a little bit to Jack yeah. as well and say, hey, what are we looking at here? What do we got here? And really utilise that. So I think we're going to see a pretty nice battle Friday night, Ronnie, and no doubt we're going to get a nice bumper crowd in, not only to see Melbourne, but to see the great man as well. But yes. uh, this is going to be a marquee game and something that I think the Chargers have circled on the calendar. And the opportunity for both teams right now is breaking 500. Yes. And to be at 500 early in the season and not to be trailing in any sport is really key. And I can just sense right now that for Hobart and for Melbourne, you get to 500, you reassess, you're about to get, you're about to go on the road again, or you're about to be at home again. Look at where you sit on the ladder, look at your percentages, see where you go from there. So for both sides here, the opportunity to be three and three. If you're going to be 500, you're going to be eighth, nine, or ten. You're going to be extremely close to the plane. It's then getting one game, two game, three game, four game above 500 that you really start to build a reputation in the yes. league. So. This is a really key game for both sides, uh, and it's tough to pick a winner, Ronnie. Of course, I'll go with Hobart at home, but Melbourne's a hell of an opposition, that's for sure. Uh, absolutely, and we're really looking forward to this matchup. And we, it all begins at eight o'clock Friday night at the Hobart Netball and Sports Centre. We'll be on air from seven fifty-five p.m. But yeah, get down there if you want to see uh, one of the greatest of all time, as far as I'm concerned. Wow, 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 wow! The NBL yes. goat. Yeah, there we go. The NBL goat. Yes, oh, that that's period. Uh, of course, Andrew Gaze is in town with his Melbourne Tigers, uh, and looking forward to a bumper crowd. Tickets by the Try Booking website. We'll have links absolutely um, you below can also, below in the description and yep. links on the socials. Yes, yep, Jabber? correct. Yeah, okay. Of course, you can also go to the Chargers if you go to the NBL One website and go to the Hobart Chargers and go to buy tickets. You can also buy your tickets through there as well. So the Chargers website via the NBL One website and, of course, try booking as well. Oh, there you go. And, of course, you can keep up to date with all the goings on here at the Hobart Chargers through our social media. Of course, we're, we're pumping everything out left, right, centre. You can give us a like on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. You can give us a follow on Instagram. And you can subscribe to the YouTube channel as well too where you can see all the post-game interviews. That, that includes Devin Watson and... Uh, Nick Posiglou. Uh, Nick Posiglou. Kira Rowe. Rowe and Taylor Steindl. Steindl. And if you wanted to find that, for those that were there on the night, if you want to find out why there was a championship wrestling belt, of course. Nick Possiglou does reveal that. And again, absolutely. Big, big shout out to Ballarat. They had the, um, it's the no rebounds, no championships. Apparently their rebounding coach is a bit of a, um, a wrestling tragic. Um, and he basically wanted to institute that if you get the most rebounds in the game, you get to carry the belt. So there you go. a couple of uh, funny, strange looks, but uh, <laughs> and they certainly got it from the commentary box. But Absolutely. yeah, no, a sensational little incentive, and we see that through a lot of different teams now yeah. in different sports, Ronnie, where they have the chain, usually the padlock on a chain yep. for lockdown, defence, and stuff like that. So no, really interesting incentive there from... Uh, from the miners, there's no doubt about that. But, yeah, head on over to our YouTube channel. You can yep. check out all the press conferences this week yes. um, via our Chargers YouTube channel as well. 
Yes, we're, we're, we're firing on all cylinders here, of course, tomorrow. We're, we're off to Launceston for the UBL, JB. Just a shameless plug there. Yes, absolutely. Utahs will be up in Launceston for their first home game in Launceston. Yeah. So excited to get on the road at 7.15am. <laughs> Nothing like getting up at 6.15am to head there on the road at 7.15am. I can't wait. It's going to be thrilling, ladies and gentlemen. Thrilling. Absolutely. And, of course, Friday night we'll be uh, we'll be back at the Hobart Netball Sports Centre by the NBL One website or the NBL One app. Um, we're hoping to get Andrew uh, to have a bit of a talk to us at, at some stage, whether that's post, <laughs> whether that's post game or yeah, wherever that's before out. the game, we're going to work on work on that as well too. We might even try and get Mason to come on as as, as well. Rex the Rhino will be at the game, really. Of yep. course, Rex had a massive weekend he did. as well. He was not only at both the games, but here at Swisher where we're recording the show, the Dominoes Basketball Club had their yes. family open day essentially, and Rex along with Jack the Jumper from the Tasmania Jack Jumpers, yes. really popular with the kids, Ronnie. Oh it's, my word! Can't believe you missed out on that one. No, they no, they was, were everywhere. It was unbelievable. I was too busy in a production meeting with NBL1, JB, and no, I've heard good things about Rex Arano. He, and making re- he, like he, he tells me now that his best friend is Jack the Jack Jumper. And oh, you've been see, relegated. <laughs> apparently oh, so. <laughs> great, to, uh, great to see them two getting along. I believe there was an arm wrestle. I believe yeah. there was a shootout. There was a shootout. There was an arm, arm wrestle. wrestle. Seems like the kids thought they could dunk on them as well. Yes, apparently the kids wanted um, the Jack Jumper and the Rex to uh, try and dunk. I believe Rex got upstairs. Yes, I think uh, Jack the Jumper tried as well. Of course, you would hope that Jack the Jumper got up with the uh, <laughs> athleticism uh, that comes with that there. But no, a massive yes. day here, um, you know, and on behalf of the Hobart Chargers, and it's great to be supporting all our local yes, clubs where JB. we can with things like that. So great to have Rex out and about with Jack the Jumper. Hundreds of people here at Swish are really enjoying the day. Of course, a couple of photos streaming yep. through as mm. we go along. Um, but yeah, no, great to have Rex. And of course, even more action going on Saturday night, Ronnie. We had Cal Bruton in the house for the yes, weekend as Brooklyn absolutely. was getting his minutes for the season. But, of course, uh, the great man, D-Mac, yes. Daryl McDonald, the assistant coach of the Knox Raiders, was in as well. So we got a nice photo with Cal yep. and Dale. So, you know, it's almost the hub of... Uh, NBL royalty, the Hobart Sport Netball Centre oh, recently, of course. Absolutely. We got the Gays family yeah. this week. Yeah. We had uh, Bruton and McDonald last week. Yep. It's, everything's <laughs> happening. Chargers games and the Chargers Basketball Club are the place to be in season 2023. Absolutely. On that note, we will sign off here. But just before we sign off, I keep forgetting every week now, but make sure you follow the NBL one on all their socials as well too. They're pumping out uh, a lot of stuff left, right and centre They've got as some well really too. unique posts, Ronnie, as well. Yes. You know, they've, mm. they do a gallery of photos of the week from all yes. across the country, sneakers of the week, players yes. of the week. And, of course, for everyone who wants to tune in to the games, remember the only place yes. to tune in <laughs> for free is the MBL One website or the MBL One app. They are the only places Absolutely. to legitimately and freely watch the games. And the Chargers always get game links up five minutes before tip-off. So game yes. links will be 5.55 and 7.55 uh, this weekend. Absolutely. The amount of blocking we've had to do on the social media for, Genuine, front, genuinely, for, spam, for spam links is, is unbelievable. Genuinely, the Dikembe mm. Mutombo of social media, Ronnie Riggs. <laughs> yeah, this... <laughs> no illegal links here, ladies no, and gentlemen. definitely not. We will sign off here from Swisher Hoops Academy for, for this week and we'll be back next week. We'll where we'll, where we will review uh, the the game against Melbourne and of course preview the road trip coming up as the Chargers hit back on the road once again. But for now, we will sign off and get out of here. And I might just go get some shots up just quietly. Yeah, oh, I think it's time for dinner. Yes, that too. All right. On behalf of Justin Bryan, I'm Ron Riggs. We'll see you Friday night at the Hobart Netball and Sports Centre.